Welcome to This is Douglas County. I'm your host, Rick Martin. The winter season is upon us, and as the temperature continues to drop, the possibility of snow and black ice increases every day. In preparation for the inclement weather, our Department of Transportation is making plans to ensure the safety of Douglas County citizens on the roads. We take an inside look at the winter storm operations with Director Miguel Valentin. This is Douglas County. Director Valentin, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Well, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year, 2019, um, we're, we're dealing with um, just being ready for storm winter operations. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's so, uh, you are such, your department, Director of Transportation, your department is such a critical department for Douglas County to be ready. Can you tell me how you become ready for storm winter operations when you hear? Well, we actually start preparations very early in the fall. Uh, we have a fleet of trucks that we normally use for paving operations. And as the fall goes into winter, we have to phase out of one operation into the other. So we make sure that the trucks are fully operational towards the end of the year. Uh, we make sure that we have uh, supplies ready for the winter. Supplies are salt, gravel, sand, things that we typically would put on a road uh, when we have inclement weather, icing, uh, heavy snow, and that sort of thing. So that is uh, typically what we do in anticipation now when in anticipation of, uh, of the winter weather, when we do the actual switchover to winter operations, we take sand spreaders that uh, are detachable and we mount them on our tandem trucks. Ah. And we have three of those. And so we reserve uh, one or two trucks to continue our paving operation uh, as long as we can. But then we have to have uh, the winter equipment ready. So we have the sand spreaders attached to the trucks and tested out, make sure they, they're fully functional. And then we will take them out on the road, test them, make sure that all the pumps work and the hydraulics and everything. And then we put them inside uh, the hangar uh, at Public Works uh, ready for winter operations. We will have a loader uh, that's ready to, uh, as soon as we know that winter weather is coming, to load up the trucks and have them indoors, uh, out of the cold, uh, ready for deployment. You know, you mentioned uh, important factor that uh, uh, three trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, little do people know, Douglas County, uh, the Department of Transportation is relatively, would you say, a, a small department? It is a, a rather small department for the size of the county. For the size of the county, exactly. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, would you, how many employees, roughly, would you say you have? We have a total of about 30 uh, employees in that division. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, they're not all, uh, they do different functions. So. Uh, some of those employees uh, do the paving. Uh, some of them do other maintenance repairs, sidewalk repairs, uh, concrete work, work on, on bridges or guardrails, whenever, small repairs. And uh, they also do the mowing. Uh, wow. so, we have, so we have a crew dedicated to mowing during the mowing season. 
So it's so like it, multitasking for the employees, most, huh? Most definitely, <laughs> and, and they're cross trained so they can help in the winter time when, okay. when necessary. So uh, no question about it, but uh, luckily uh, this past uh, budget season, uh, we were uh, allowed, given the funding to, to procure another two tandem trucks with the winter equipment, uh, the sand spreaders and snow plows. Now, we placed the order many months ago in the hopes that they would be delivered uh, on time for the winter weather. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not going to be the case. So they will, they will arrive sometime in the spring. Hopefully we will have no snow or ice uh, before <laughs> then. But uh, so we will be augmenting our fleet to, to five trucks. Uh, for oh, winter okay. operations for so, next season. Sounds like you have a growing operation, which is good for a growing county. It, exactly. We're, we're trying to, uh, to make sure that we are uh, staying uh, ahead of uh, the, the, the need because, again, as you say, a growing county. We also, uh, and a lot of people may not know this, uh, we also uh, respond to incidents or situations on state routes uh, at times just because we can get there quicker than they can. We don't like to volunteer uh, necessarily to do that on a regular basis because, well, the, the Georgia DOT has a lot more equipment, a, a lot more manpower than we do, but, uh, but on occasion we will respond to those situations uh, because we can get there quicker. So that explains quite a bit even for my department in terms of communications um, department because oftentimes you know in emergency situations in the winter for example with interstate 20 coming through our county um, if there's an accident on interstate 20 which is the state highway uh, DOT may be there first so when the media sees that they oftentimes call my department um, asking what's going on and I'm trying to tell them, you know, Georgia Department of Transportation is responsible. Um, they should be there. So now I understand we're kind of connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. So little did I know, sometimes DOT is asked to assist or just responds until they get there, huh? Absolutely. Uh, they could, uh, the Georgia DOT may have their, their forces deployed in, in different areas mm -hmm. and they will respond uh, in due course, however, uh, oftentimes we can get there quicker, and, and so if it's an emergency situation, we we will provide assistance uh, as needed. And you know that leads in, leads to my next question: uh, In what ways, given the size of your department, I guess it's uh, encouraging that you work in a collaborative way with uh, Georgia Department of Transportation, but in what ways do you work with, with GDOT, as we like to call them? Well, um, on the maintenance side, uh, in addition to the response, sort of a, a mutual aid agreement, if you will, uh, if we have a need for equipment as well, or particularly materials, uh, mm -hmm. there is a material depot uh, near Thornton Road, uh, a DOT, uh, depot that uh, on occasion, if uh, if we are running low on salt, uh, or if there's a need to apply the salt to a state route, uh, they will allow us to go there and and uh, load up our, the truck, and essentially we're uh, we're using their material mostly on their road too. <laughs> right. So so essentially we're assisting with our equipment to. Uh, to clear up uh, the, the interstate route. Gotcha, gotcha. How are the roadways impacted during the storms? I mean, I know it's obvious for some, but describe how the roads are well, impacted. Well, it, it's uh, managing uh, the maintenance operation for winter weather. It, it's, it's almost like an art because uh, you can you can try and anticipate what's going to happen and deploy your forces for what you think is going to happen and the weather will turn and the timing will be off uh, instead of 
uh, snow, you, it might turn to ice. And so you almost have to be ready for whatever is going to happen. And you hope, uh, really, I mean, we are in essence anticipating uh, a variety of things and we will be able to respond to whatever we get. The, the issue is, are we uh, sort of anticipating the right uh, uh, weather event? The, you know, will it play out that way? If it does, then we're ahead of the, uh, of the curve. We're, we're uh, out there quicker uh, than, than we would otherwise. If it turns, uh, for example, we may have a, uh, a sand spreader ready to deploy to, uh, to go address a, a, a patch of ice somewhere, and the weather turns, and now it starts raining. Well, we may not need to use that mm. on, on that uh, area because, because the rain will wash it away. Or instead of the gravel that we typically would deploy with the sand, uh, with, the, uh, with the salt, we might just uh, go to sand, straight sand, because it will be uh, washed away, and broken up and washed away. So information is the key for your preparation. It, it is, and, and um, no, no question about it. We do stay uh, in touch, in, in fact, with, with the Weather Service. In fact, we are part of that emergency response operation. So whenever there's um, significant inclement weather and, and uh, the, the county forces, the emergency management staff is deployed, we would be one of the part of the team that that deploys to the uh, operation center to make sure that we manage that uh, from that standpoint. Dynamic. Uh, it, it is uh, not only uh, necessary, uh, you know, the transportation component for the public, but also for emergency equipment. Sometimes uh, you, you may have, uh, unfortunately, you could have a fire uh, at the same time as you have a winter event, and and we need to make sure that that emergency equipment is able to get to where it needs to. Uh, and we may uh, have a, a salt and sand truck ahead of the uh, fire truck, if necessary, to make sure they can get there. How would you suggest and recommend to uh, drivers, uh, Douglas County citizens driving on the roadways, to uh, uh, prepare or avoid roadways during inclement weather? What advice would you well, one of the things, uh, well, if, if I could give one uh, overarching advice is mm -hmm. don't drive. If you, if you <laughs> stay off the road. Stay right? off the road. Stay if you can roads. possibly yes. do that, uh, because, you know, sometimes you, you think, uh, well, I, I'm a pretty good driver. Uh, most of us think that I'm a pretty good driver. Uh, it's, it's only down the road. Um, I, I've done this a, a gazillion times. Uh, and, and so it will not be a problem. And what I would say to those folks is, uh, it's not you that I'm worried about, it's the other guy that can't drive. Mm. Uh, so you might be a great driver, but you don't always, uh, you're not always dealing with uh, people with your level of skill mm -hmm. out on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, it's, if, if you can avoid it, uh, that would be the best advice, uh, but if, um, if you have to go out, depending on your destination, uh, I would say stay on major routes because those are prioritized in the winter time for, uh, you know, whether it be snow removal or if it's a, an ice uh, uh, event, uh, then um, those are the roads that the equipment is first deployed to to make sure they stay open subdivisions and secondary roads are last, if at all, depending on the intensity of the event. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether you can get there, if it's, if it's a mile away, uh, normally through back roads, uh, but it would be two miles if you go on major routes, I would say I would recommend go on the major routes you stand a better chance of getting there and back safely than trying your typical route that uh, is not going to be as clear as the major routes. So stay off the secondary roads. Correct. 
stay on the major routes. Correct. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, you talked about, you know, staffing, um, you know, you limited resources in terms of staffing, but tell us a little bit about um, how you're staffed during snow winter operations, because little do people know, I think, um, you know, given your staff, you're, I've seen you, you guys in action. You're a 24 seven operation when it hits, right? Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, essentially we have uh, everybody in the maintenance department is an on-call person, meaning that uh, if we have an emergency situation, it's all hands on deck. And uh, so we would have the ability to call uh, folks uh, when needed in the middle of the night, uh, uh, often is the case. Uh, and they will respond to to assist. So we may we may go into or anticipate a certain level storm and and deploy um, a crew of perhaps six or eight individuals um, who are who will be on standby at Public Works, ready to go wherever they need to. And the calls will come in from the operations center or the sheriff's office or 911. Uh, as the case may be, depending on the type of storm. So they will deploy to where they're needed, but if the situation deteriorates, then we will need additional staff. We will call the rest of the group in, and as they come in, uh, then they will be deployed to, mm. to assist. Now, if it's a longer duration storm, then we have to be judicious as to <laughs> how many we call in at one time because we anticipate that it's going to go past 8 or 10 or 12 hours and, and we're going to need somebody that, uh, that just comes off a 12-hour shift to be able to get some rest and have new folks come in and, and be ready uh, to, to, to take up uh, the, the, the task because um, when, it, when we go to 24-hour operation, typically we, we go to to 12-hour shifts so that we keep that rotation. And uh, uh, so we'll have to essentially be working with half the crew or half of the staff uh, for a 12-hour period and, and then rotate out and bring the others in. So you, you mentioned 911 um, emergency operations, and it's interesting because I think that's really educational to let people know that um, you, you work in a sort of integrated way in terms of emergency operations for the roadways uh, with 911 mm -hmm. by receiving notifications Correct. Um, on ice or, or you know, response. You know, tell us a little bit about that. Well, one of the things that, um, that we try to do is anticipate as best we can what type of storm uh, is going to hit and when. And we rely on, on the National Weather Server, Service. Uh, uh, they track uh, the storms and they relay that information to uh, the emergency operations manager who uh, constantly tracks that. And, and so he provides us or that group will provide us with updates as to the location of the storm, whether it's uh, uh, a snow event or if it's turning to mix snow and rain or mix uh, rain and into ice. And so we're, we're monitoring that uh, because again, as I mentioned earlier, we have to prepare and deploy the right equipment for the type of event and with the right materials to deploy to the road. So we are very much plugged into that emergency response uh, so that we can get out there with the, with the right equipment at, uh, ahead of the storm. One of the things that we do, and, and in fact, we're, we're, we're getting more into this, and hopefully for next season we will mm -hmm. have a lot more capability, but uh, we, will, we are gearing up a brine operation. Now, brine is a mixture of salt and water at a certain um, uh, ratio. And uh, if, if we anticipate that there's going to be an icing event, then 
uh, and this is icing as in the cold variety, <laughs> not, uh, not the, the one that goes on top of the cake. Uh, but it, but if, if the weather is going to be where we think it might rain and turn to ice, or if it's rain and, and the ground is wet mm -hmm. and, and it's going to get uh, go to freezing and, and we're going to have ice patches on the road, then um, in anticipation of that type of event, we uh, are gearing up to deploy uh, brine. And so this is a salt and water solution that we put on the, on the road limited areas because we do not have a lot of capability with that. But bridges, for example, overpasses, uh, steep slopes, curves. Mm -hmm. We will deploy that solution and that prevents the water from, or it doesn't totally prevent it, depends how cold it gets, but it, it um, uh, eliminates or lowers the temperature at which water freezes. So then, so then the water will not freeze unless it gets much colder than, than it would. And so the goal of something like that is that it will keep any potential uh, ice from forming because it, there's this salt solution on, on the road. Of course, it's not to any depth. It, it, it's uh, sprayed on or um, it just filters on and, and it coasts the road, doesn't ice itself. It, so therefore, uh, it, it helps with that situation. And it also helps if, in fact, later on, there should be the weather continues to get colder and we get more icing uh, in other areas. Those areas can still ice over. If, if the temperature goes low enough. However, as it begins to warm up, those are the first areas that the ice breaks up on. Mm -hmm. And those are the first areas that would be clear, which is exactly what you want. So even when the weather doesn't help uh, as much as it should or could, or we would hope, um, uh, we still get benefit from deploying that that brine solution. So um, that is something that we're we're and there's you know the Georgia DOT is doing more of that. However, they of course they do that on the state routes, uh, but we're looking to do the same thing uh, on our county roads. Gotcha. So opportunity to grow in the advancement mm -hmm. of technology sure. in responding. So that's right. great. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Director Valentine. My pleasure. When we come back. We'll take you out into the field, field operations of the Department of Transportation here in Douglas County to show you some of the equipment. Welcome back to This is Douglas County. I'm Rick Martin. With me right now at this moment, I have the pleasure to have Mr. LeVon King. He's Douglas County's Department of Transportation Division Maintenance Manager. And we are here, basically here in a uh, building uh, where the Division of Transportation Headquarters is out in the field. Uh, Mr. King, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. You know, what I wanted to ask you, describe where we are, please, for our uh, viewers. This is the uh, our facility now that is previously housed by uh, Douglas County Fleet Management. Okay. Um, and now we've taken this building over to put, keep some of our equipment in the dry. All right, so yeah, so we didn't have to purchase this at all, did we? No, sir. Oh man, this is great. Well, I see we have a lot of trucks here, you know, as we're doing the show about snow winter uh, operations. I understand, you know, there's some preparations you've, you've made, is that correct? Yes, sir. You know, tell me, I, I noticed some trucks here. Can you describe what's behind on these dump trucks? Yes, sir, these are uh, tandem axle dump trucks with uh, nine yard salt and sand spreaders in the back of them. Oh, how long did it take to put it on? Uh, they take uh, about 30, 45 minutes a unit. Really, how many men it takes to put it on? Four. Four, four men each to, yes, to put it back. Now where some people would think that we have 
just salt sand trucks. We're in a very unique position, aren't we? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, sir, as far as the, the dump trucks go, the salt and sand spreaders, actually you can remove them and put them back in. Ah. So during the summertime months, we utilize the tandem dump trucks, whether it be hauling gravel for the gravel roads or asphalt for the paving crew. Wow, wow. You know, how many men do you have under you, you know, to help run this operation? When we're fully staffed, there's 30. 30, wow. You know, and I think what'll be, you know, really good um, to let our viewers know is you, you have job openings now, right? Yes, sir, we currently have two positions open, two operator, two positions. Okay, and we encourage folks to visit CelebrateDouglasCounty.com, you know, where they can apply for these positions. How long have you worked here, Mr. King? October was four years. Four years. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I come from um, originally when I got out of school, uh -huh. which was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I went to work for Cobb County DOT okay. for a while, and then um, I went to a uh, private contractor. Gotcha. And it was in the road building business, in the paving business, concrete business. And um, I worked there for 18 years. Wow. Oh, man, that's great. You know, well, in Douglas County, you know, we value having you here. You. And I've heard, you know, very good things. And I had the pleasure to work with you recently. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about snow winter operations, how it impacts you 24-7 when it comes to, like, say, black ice. Well, we, we prepare. Of course, we keep a very close contact with Jason Milholland. Uh, and and we, he's director of emergency management yes, agency for the and county. And we keep a track with the weather. And if they're calling for some inclement weather, um, and we know it's on its way, we split the guys up in two shifts, two 12-hour shifts. So we're we're here around the clock. Um, in some cases, uh, last week, for example. Uh, the news was calling for some black ice situations last Monday or Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. And just to be on the safe side, to be prepared for the school buses, the general public driving, uh, we had some guys come in early that morning and just in, to be ready, just in case it did start freezing. Gotcha. So you're pretty much, this is pretty much a 24 7 round the clock operation yes, sir. In, in the event of inclement weather. Yes, sir. Okay, you and a team of folks, you know, on the ready at any time. Yes, sir. Uh, Douglas County DOT employees are, all of them are basically on call. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that, that's good to know. Um, tell me, when it comes to the number of trucks, people often think, you know, that Douglas County has a plethora of trucks, you know, which isn't the case just because they cost quite a bit, don't they? Yes, sir. These are costly items. Yes, sir. You know, um, tell me a little bit about how fortunate we are as a result of obtaining these these trucks and some of this apparatus. We, we were very fortunate. The Douglas County Department of Transportation was very fortunate to be able to get the 2016 SPLOST. Um, not only for us as far as support equipment, but just for transportation in general. Uh, we currently have three of the salt and sand spreaders now, and we have two ordered. Um, the two that we have ordered, these are not equipped with uh, snow plows, but the two that, are, that we have ordered have snow plows on them along with a salt and sand spreader on the back. Wow, so that's great. So with the population of, of uh, well, the growth of population for the county, so is our Department of Transportation, thanks to the citizens. Huh? Yes, sir. Oh, that's great, that's great. Well, thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time you're, yes, you've taken uh, uh, for this and uh, look forward to you showing us around a little bit. Sounds good. All right. We're now outside in front of the Salt Dome. Mr. King, tell me a little bit about what's behind us. Well, on the right here, you have, uh, which is the pure salt that, that we put out on the road with a mixture of washed 89 stone. Mm -hmm. um, 
on the right here is the pure salt and on the left is what's already been mixed ready to go out on the road. And this is what goes in the dump trucks that we just saw yes. with the shredders on the back, right? Yes. Sir. Now when people see this, they may think, is this all we have for the county? Which I know for a fact, we have a wonderful collaborative relationship with Georgia Department of Transportation, yes, right? And they have some salt domes. So tell me a little bit about that relationship we have. Yeah, when, when we have a major event, such as, you know, we had two last year, um, the Georgia Department of Transportation has a facility over on Presley Mill Road uh, where they keep a large amount of salt and sand stockpile. And they also have a facility out on I-20 at uh, Lee Road that gotcha. we were able to utilize also. Uh, we usually, we try to help them out. They'll allow us to get material from their locations. And with this being Douglas County, you know, the, the Georgia Department of Transportation, they put most of their efforts towards the interstates. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we'll help them out with, uh, especially the big hill on Highway 5 at Dog River. We usually try to help them out and uh, doing that, they kind of pay us back by letting us get some material from them from Got time you. to time. Oh man, that's been great. Mr. King, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed an opportunity to take an inside look into the Department of Transportation here at Douglas County's, how they prepare for snow winter operations. My name is Rick Martin, your host, and this is Douglas County. Thank you.